What's up, Shredders? My name is Logan, aka Spiderhands, and welcome to an SB Reviews, where today we have ourselves a track from an act named what I believe to be Rose Blossom 7s, titled Boomerang. And if we switch over to here, we have ourselves a track on YouTube Music, if I'm not mistaken. I think we can make this big screen, and we're going to listen through it from start to finish, and we're going to hear what we think. Just advising that I'm going to be grading this track on a set of criteria and giving it an overall score at the end, but before that, let's go. Man, that bass is... That bass is firing, man. I hope the price was worth the cost. I want to pause for a sec, if this will allow me to pause. So just at the halfway point, I'll try not to pause again during this session because I'm trying to sort of spend more time listening, you know. But the the thing I notice is that there is a distortion to those 808s and those kicks, and they have been pushed. And if that's a stylistic thing, I think that's really cool. I think it's an interesting tone because often people will kind of try and st stave away and that kind of digital distortion sound with those bass and drum elements there. I like the auto-tune on the vocals. Like, it's very aggressive meta-tune as well. But I, I think it's an interesting sort of unique style we're going for here, or really committing to it. The words are coming through clearly, and I appreciate that as well. It's just going to be interesting to see how they continue this. to you. 
Oh, it's done. I kind of like that we were just telling a story the entire time over top of like a palatable theme. It was an interesting experience. We're going to talk about this track more in the conclusion. And welcome to the analysis and conclusion section of my review of this track from an actor named Rose Blossom 7, titled Boomerang. Now, I, I think that I gave this track an overall score of about 7 out of 10, which is definitely not bad. There's a lot of stuff that I appreciated about this. Um, I think the story itself, it, Boomerang, we, we heard parts of it being about like the person playing in the pig pen and then eventually people are gonna they're gonna come after you and stuff like that. so i think it's about karma or like kind of consequences and and you know having to deal with what you've caused out of your actions you know what i mean like that that it's gonna kind of so what goes around comes around so i think that that story there is quite easy to follow along to a lot of people will be able to sort of understand appreciate that there'll be an audience for hearing a tale like that the vocals are interesting I liked a lot of the ideas we were trying to do uh, behind the intense amount of sort of like uh, vocal modulation we had there. There was a lot of stepping going on there, but I think that it allowed us to explore a lot of different sort of legato passages and different uh, sort of concepts in a way that was safe. And I think that when you commit to the bit immediately, like you're not trying to be subtle about the way that you treat your voice in post-production and stuff like that, I think that's awesome. And I, I kind of like the aesthetic we were going for here. I think that there was a lot of range to different vocal melodies throughout. We didn't, tip, I think this was practically a through composed piece, if I'm not mistaken. I'm not sure if there was like a chorus for a structure to it, but I don't necessarily mind that. I think in a longer track, I think in a long form track like this, where there's like a main sort of beat behind it with variations of the synth parts and stuff like that, but, but not a huge amount of um, variety in regards to the structure of the various chord progressions or something like that. Uh, you can have the vocals be the thing that keeps you going together through composed and it's still enough. Uh, we had solid vocal technique there i think we hit a lot of the notes that i can hear quite cleanly regardless of the vocal effects i think it, it was satisfying i mean like as the main vocal lead for a lot of it we didn't have sort of stuff around the sides or anything like that but i don't think we needed to it was more about the the kind of idea of having us in the center telling a tale to the person about what was going to happen to them because of the way they behaved and i think that's effective the track itself at 543 as i mentioned i think it's through composed there's not a lot of adjustment to the actual part behind the, the sung bits here. And I don't think that's a bad thing. I, I think that, again, if you can keep, if you can sort of long form a story that you're telling, it's it's not like there haven't been other hundreds, of, you know, countless other successful musicians who have done pieces like that, like where you, you have a kind of a concept for a chord progression or whatever, and you kind of tell, the main thing that changes is, is the lyrics and, and the way you sing. And I think that again, we have enough variety there to sort of justify it. It is a long song, way outside of the two to four minute sweet spot that I usually have for tracks. But I think in a way, if you're invested in what they're saying, you'll take your time to listen from it. And to be fair to Rose Blossom 7s, I was not expecting it to end like that. So that caught me off guard. Often, to be fair, you have a signal from the track that things are going to get quieter there or something like that, or things are going to go down. When you have the consistency of the theme continued, it can be kind of a little bit blunt to end it like that. But nonetheless, I think that I understand what we did. And I think that it was good to sort of start off a bit slower and kind of introduce things and then kind of continue for the rest of it. I talk about a few of the instruments I appreciated here. I think that the bass line, the, the 808s that we had there, they were nice and strong. They were thick and full on the low end there. They were, they were powerful. They kind of shoved the way into the headphones there and, and it really sort of grounded the, the composition itself. The drums there, 
we had um an interesting moment with those kicks those kicks were compressed and they were gritty and they had a bit of sort of like fizz and, and pop to them man they, they were they were powerful kicks and there's a bit of that sort of like digital kind of grain that i mentioned there that kind of pushed the the limiters and let the faders a little bit but i don't think in a way that was detrimental there it's not like it negatively affected the vocal performance there it just added a bit of edginess to this track where i think if we hadn't had them it might have been a too, bit too clean sounding actually if because considering the kind of drama and tension and like the danger we're discussing within the story because of those again those actions and the consequences they're kind of sort of like um sort of sort of like the the the, the, the chopped kind of kicks there add it kind of fit well with that tonally i think I think there were some occasional snare and like hi-hat patterns there, but predominantly it was that kick, whether it was quiet or not. It was there with the bass. There's that ball, kind of pad synth there. Can, that kind of glided through the arrangement and the hole there. We had some sparkles above that with upper layer harmonies. Um, it was pretty sounding. It had an almost sort of ethereal, mystical sound to it that I kind of appreciate. And when we talk about the kind of concept of like karma and everything like that, it kind of makes sense you have similar sounds like that to kind of suit the theme of um you know not like a fantasy thing but what i mean is more like uh you know that kind of the awareness of like the cosmic kind of forces driving to be able to kind of you know deal deal what needs to be done in that situation so i think that when you combine it with other maybe some other sort of sub -lab pads there might have been some other key parts there i'm not sure it was quite a tight mix to be honest but ultimately i think that there was enough going on within this track uh instrumental layer wise to keep it interesting with the, again the understanding what i said about the vocals and i think uh yeah that's basically it uh, the structure of it was consistent and i don't think there was a note out of place there and i think ultimately you had like a sense of mourning from the theme i should say there there was a more of a minor focus to the overall chord progressions and harmonies there even though it's kind of bright and sort of like sparkly in parts because of the upper level layer sort of pads and it's it's more like we sounded the music sounded sad that that person had to go and mess around in the first place the studio recording mixing and mastering was uh it was it was a loud mix it was pushed in the limiter i think we had a bit of sort of distortion from like the kicks and stuff like that but if that was again if that was a stylistic thing that's totally fine um i think barring that the leveling outside of that was was good the vocals were reasonably clear in the mix even with that compression and the kind of like breathing that we were doing there in parts there the cutting into it things were nice and wide in the stereo field there's a bit of filtering and like kind of rises and, and such there there was stuff going on within the actual beat behind it that was trying to sort of like encourage various transitions but they were more subtle i think because of how tight the, the mix was i think the reason i gave it was a seven was simply because of the stuff we had within the beat that was cool like the transitions and fades and modulations of like uh some of like the kind of synth parts and stuff like that and the automation there um but yeah the it was it was loud I, I think that the, the kind of the digital grain of the kick was more of a mixed stage thing rather than rather than master thing. So the actual master itself, the the it was loud with a bit of pumping, but still, you know, it's definitely palatable. And yeah, clearly the vocals are modulated there, but I don't think again it was a way which took away from the vocal performance itself or the story that was being told there. I think it was definitely more of a stylistic thing. But this is my review of this track from an act named Rose Blossom Sevens titled Boomerang, and hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, please go show them some love via YouTube Music and ever all the other places and digital stream platforms. And stay cool and stay safe. And please remember to support your local musicians and artists at this point in time as you need the help. More than ever, a lot of crazy stuff going on in the world, and I will catch you in the next review. Spider Hands out.